Oh, Homer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a suspension. All right, welcome back to another School Principal Reacts. I'm continuing to go through Ned's Declassified. This one is called Upperclassmen. I'm not really used to hearing this term in middle school, but uh, generally it means students who are in the upper grades, I guess, of that particular school. I guess you could call maybe eighth graders and a middle school upperclassman, but I don't hear that term a whole lot. And you do get sort of this image in this random still frame of the guys in the letterman jackets and they're cool and they're older and they're kind of somewhat intimidating to other students. That is very common. But I can't wait to see what kind of take this show has on the concept of upperclassmen. Just a reminder to subscribe to the channel if you tune in week after week, but aren't a subscriber, please click the button below to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Let's get into it. They're bigger, more dangerous, uh, and sometimes scary. So unless you're at the top of the school chain, you're going to have to deal with upperclassmen. Eighth grade privilege. Oh, we've been waiting. Eighth grade well, then you can privilege. wait till next year. And this guy, this guy is no middle schooler. I look at him. I he looks he looks like maybe an eleventh or twelfth grader to me, uh, like an upperclassman in high school, not even in middle school. But he's supposed to be in eighth grade. His face just looks a little too old for that. But I get what they're saying. Um, it depends on where you are. I have seen this kind of attitude before, like I'm an upperclassman and only I can do this. Um, it makes me think of in high school, the seniors, like when students are freshmen and seniors get certain privileges that are sanctioned by the school, not like cutting in line like this, but certain like senior days and senior activities, the freshmen hate it and they say it's not fair. But then when they're seniors, they want all the different senior privileges, so uh, he cuts in line. Uh, you can't do that. That's not part of it. When you have eighth grade privilege. <laughs> not how it works. Yeah, that's bullying. Duh. Hi. Oh, boy. Believe that? I know. Chuck Goldman just said hi to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm in eighth grade. I'm not just going to dump on kids because they're younger. Today is my chance. Mm. And I've heard that many times before. So a lot of times I will hear high schoolers, again, not in middle school, but in high school, they'll say, when I'm a junior, senior, I'll do this or that, or I won't want uh, this privilege. But then when they get there, they always you know, want the perks of being a senior or whatever it is. Is there more to this great story? I signed up or adopt a fifth grader. Mm. You know, you answer their questions and get them ready for when they come here next year. Okay, he says, and I see uh, Vice Principal Krubs here. I was wondering when he was going to make a reappearance on the show. And you do have transition days or little activities where you get uh, fifth graders ready for sixth grade, eighth graders ready for ninth grade and help them to transition into a new school. That is something that's very real and very helpful in most places. Ned, <laughs> I'd like you to meet your adopted fifth on glasses. grader, Palmer Noyd. He put his glasses on just so he could take them off to that little 80s style sound effect. Again, I can see why you guys like this character so much. Palmer here is very unique <laughs> and i thought you and your tip book would be a perfect match so. okay <laughs> that's crazy so palmer <laughs> okay he looks the other way and he's got a crowbar yeah yeah that's a suspension uh even just having this crowbar at school is a huge problem that's very very dangerous and then he's damaging this locker yeah this little partnership would be ended real quick got any questions yeah what will it take to get you to shut your yeah mm. you doing no what the fuck? Run, run. I'm wondering, was that Loomer's locker or no. what? Quick, hide me. I don't want her to see me here. Simon, 
Simon, is that you? Vanessa. Is this? Hi. Vanessa. What are you doing going into a seventh grade homeroom? And I remember the name Vanessa being in his little uh, digital planner or whatever that was. It was the procrastination episode. Uh, check it out if you haven't seen it. But uh, I remember hanging out with Vanessa or whatever was in there. And at the time, I'm like, who is Vanessa again? But I guess now we know. You know, I never see you upstairs. What's your locker number? Oh, mm. two, um, uh -oh. 59. Great. I'll look for you later. <laughs> uh oh. So your eighth grade honors math crush doesn't know you're in the seventh grade. No. Oh, yeah, that's right, because he's taking an advanced math of some kind. He's being allowed to sit in an eighth grade math class, which you do have that at some schools that will allow students to do that, depending on uh, various factors, academic factors usually. But for whatever reason, this girl thinks naturally that he's in eighth grade just because he's in that class and he's, well, he's not saying anything about what grade he's truly in, so... Uh, he has basically lied to her by saying where his locker is in some, I guess, eighth grade part of the school. I wonder how he's going to get out of this one. So I'm pretending I have all eighth grade classes mm. until I ask her to the eighth grade dance where we'll fall in love and our love will conquer the fact that How's I'm he gonna do that? a seventh grader. Good plan. Bad plan. Lying is not a good way to start out a relationship. True. It's a very good way. <laughs> Where's my fifth grader? Where's Paul? Uh-oh. Oh, boy. And if Krubs knew that this kid was quite this bad or his behavior was that bad, I don't think he would have just assigned him to Ned. Uh, he would probably maybe show him around himself, maybe, if he's this uh, rough around the edges. But let's see what happens here. You guys have lunch. Come on. Wow. <laughs> he's going to pretend to have that locker and he's getting the combination. What in the world? Vanessa, hey. Hey, Simon. Mm. Hi. Just getting some stuff out of my eighth grade locker. <laughs> wow, you really love bunnies <laughs> <laughs> probably not what he was expecting <laughs> that's pretty funny oh i got them for you uh Simon, convenient you're so sweet and then they great <laughs> Jennifer. I keep forgetting about that wooden locker. I guess they allowed her to just keep that uh, wooden locker door forever that she made in one of the first episodes. That's pretty cool. For Mosley, co-captain of the seventh grade girls volleyball team and currently single. Jock Goldman, uh, captain of eighth grade everything and currently dating Amy Cassidy. Some we random. Up yesterday. <laughs> And that is very much how it works, and, and he comes out of nowhere. That's pretty funny. Like, I've commented on this before. Students will have these uh, relationships that last the day, and then they're friends, and then they're not, and then they're together, and then they're not, and just just never ends. Are they in love? I hope not. <laughs> I don't like that guy. Good. Because that guy's cheating a lot. Wow. Okay. Next stop on the tour, before we stop at the Lost and Found, is the science room. Hello, Mr. Big B. That guy? He's an evil science teacher. Avoid him at all costs. You don't like him? No problem. Oh, no. And this is way over the top. Like, particularly a kid this age. Now, have I seen kids of that age that behave really, really badly? Yes. But this is overboard. I mean, uh, breaking into lockers and stealing people's wallets. No, I haven't seen that. What in the world? You beating them up? What's going on? I got his cheese and pants! No. <laughs> you cannot just go Yeah, and that's like a suspension or placement in an alternative program. I mean, no. Around stealing pants and wallets and just... 
<laughs> okay, look at this guy's face. I totally forgot about this teacher. This guy that like his hair and beard. It's almost like he has a long beard and he combs the beard up his face into his hair. It's just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And uh, this music sounds pretty good, though. And he is somehow mesmerized by it. That's pretty cool. Okay. This is the cafeteria where we eat food. Now throw it. No, no, no. Oh, the music. I discovered. And by the way, uh, that is a real thing. What I mean is students that have really negative behaviors, but you, you have one or two things that sort of calm them down or coping mechanisms of some sort, or that they just really like one particular thing. Not so much other students, but teachers who pick up on that, they really use that to their advantage and try to uh, use that to help students learn also the same way they would with any students incorpororating that student's interests into their learning. The music sues him. So all oh, he's got a boom box there. Paul Mernoid will be out of my life for good. <laughs> keep playing it until dismissal? That's a long time. That's got to be at least two, three hours. What do you think of Jock Goldman? Oh, boy. He's totally over Amy Cassidy, and I think he's going to ask me to sit with him at lunch today. If he's so over After Amy, one day. why is his wallet filled with her pictures? Mm. Palmer uh, found it. <laughs> oh, he found it, and now it has all those pictures. Yeah. That doesn't look particularly good, does it? You must have uh, forgotten to take him out. That's all. Mm. After all, that was yesterday. See ya. Uh oh. Uh oh. <gasps> batteries. Not the batteries. Oh no. I like you. Please don't. My parents want to send me to private school. But now that we're friends, uh -oh. next year I'm coming to Polk, and we can hang out all the time. Mm. What? You can't. You have to go to a private school. <laughs> it's bad. Very, very bad uh -oh. for Palmer's. What's so bad about it? Bad. Yep, yep. They could probably help him out with that little problem. Mm. What Hurry. in the world? Jock, that's so thoughtful. I know. It's Mr. Pinky. And I think he likes you a lot. <laughs> hey, uh, meet me by my locker after class. I want to ask you something. Oh, and bring Mr. Pinky with you. What's she going to do with him all day? That thing's huge. Can't put him in that locker. I don't know what she would do with that. Would it mean anything to you if I said that I thought Jock No. Was a, but what about if I said he wasn't? No. <laughs> but he is. A no. And I think he's going to ask me to the 8th grade dance. Mm. Well, I'm off to scare Palmer into private school with a terrifying tour of the 8th grade. Which I don't typically hear that. She mentions an 8th grade dance. Um, I don't know if I've heard that now. The, a whole school dance, sure. I guess in a larger school you would have that. Like their version of the prom, which in high school is typically just 11th and 12th graders. But I don't hear that very often. An 8th grade dance is typically you have a school dance and everybody can come. Shouldn't you be giving him tips and not scaring him? I am going to give him tips. But then he won't listen to him, and that's when the 8th graders will eat him. But he's just a little kid. I mean, look at him quietly reading. Or is this he asleep? Is the most boring diary I've ever read. <laughs> Who's Jennifer Mosley? Uh-oh. Get rid of him. <laughs> Changed her mind real fast. Whether it's a bus line, a water fountain line, or a snack line, upperclassmen will say... Eighth grade privilege. Yeah, and that's just called bullying. That's not eighth grade privilege or anything like that. That's just bullying that doesn't actually exist. And even in high school where you do have upperclassmen, where you, you do hear that term, there's no such thing as you, the seniors can just break in any line. That's not the way it works. So unless you like trouble, you should probably let them have it. Mm. That's the only tip, by the way, I, I kind of disagree with. Uh, he needs to tell a teacher, really. I, I don't condone that. <laughs> try your best to stay out of the upper class hood. And if you can't, try to walk with the group. 
Mm. And by the way, it says you're now entering the eighth grade hallway. Some schools do that, but it's the school that does it. And it's almost less to keep younger students out of there and to keep the older kids away from the younger kids. It's kind of the opposite thing. But some schools do have that, an eighth grade hallway, and you're not supposed to be on it unless you're in eighth grade. I have seen that before. So never wear a shirt like this. Uh, and never walk the halls alone. And by the way, he says that, and, and I don't disagree to a point, but there shouldn't be dangerous places in the school. Uh, I always say on a lot of these episodes, there should be teachers in the hall. So many of these episodes, I just see students meandering around with no teachers around. That wouldn't be the way it is. There would be no dangerous places because the teachers would all be out in the hallway. Mm. He strikes again. Oh, no. <laughs> aware of upper class <laughs> oh goodness why do they attack ned for that doesn't make any sense he didn't do anything and i see this next tip be aware of upperclassmen traditions um i guess in general that's a wise idea there are schools that have school sanctioned traditions of some kind now it's not going to include bullying or cutting in line or any of that stuff but they might do something different that is in no way harmful. And yeah, it is helpful to be aware of those things if they exist at a school. I'm in traditions and respect them. Okay. Folk, you never step on the wolf or you will pay the price. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And there are schools that have special traditions like that where you don't, touch this or step on that or whatever until you're an upperclassman. Um, I can't think of any in schools that I've recently served at. I know that, for instance, at the University of Georgia, there's a famous arch. And I think the tradition is you can't walk through it until you after you've graduated or something like that. So there are schools that have those. Uh oh. <laughs> Does not look real. Okay, he's pretending. Woo! That eighth grade science test sure was hard. <laughs> That's the English room. Uh oh. That's why you was gonna catch so him? Hard. Will you go to the dance with me? Yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who stole Mr. Biggle Bunny from my locker. Uh oh. Here's a funny story. Does it start with you're not in the eighth grade? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. So he's found out now. This much when I'm in math with you, the rest of the time I'm kind of a seventh grader. Then I can't go to the dance with you. Mm. Because I'm in the seventh grade. Nope. No. Because you lied. Because you lied to me. But you did say yes. So if I don't lie anymore and prove my worthiness, we'll still have a chance. Maybe. You have this much of a chance. <laughs> That's pretty good. You made it. Uh, now stand right here and hold Mr. Pinky like this. I don't like the looks of this. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you like Mr. Pinky. Okay. Now it all makes sense. It's a jealousy thing. It's a jealousy thing. All right, let's see how this ends here. And I can't wait to go to the dance with you. What is she doing with Mr. Pink? You gave it to me. Uh -oh. And you give it back. So if you don't want it, I'll give it to this That's girl. what this is about. This girl? It's a thing that I planned on making you jealous at the dance so you'd want me back. Mm. I, I do want you back. She means nothing to me. Does she want to go to the dance with me? <laughs> oh, that's horrible. She's, he said that right in front of her. That's that's terrible. Oh, man. I guess Ned was right about this guy. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Oh, man. He's got a neck brace. This Palmer kid is killing me. I have to... Hey. Yeah, for once, he was right and she was wrong, which isn't usually how it happens on this show. Uh, let's see what happens. Jock never liked me. He used me to get Amy jealous. Mm-hmm. Such an idiot. No, he's the idiot. 
I think I would be lucky to have you as his girlfriend. Mm. It's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Oh, <laughs> careful. I'm still sore from giving Paul more tips. Ned, I got his cheesy hat. Uh oh. <laughs> what are you going to do with that pocket sized psycho? <laughs> And I need to start a suspensions counter for him, I guess, because he's done at least three or four things that would get a student suspended or placed in another school. Um, this is way over the top. All right. So that's the episode. I liked that one, especially with a lot of the different character developments and plot twists there. And upperclassmen, like I told you, there are middle schools where they may say that. I haven't heard that a whole lot. But just being an eighth grader, even without that little title, does kind of give the same feeling, especially if you're not in eighth grade in middle school. But upperclassmen is something you hear way more in high school to refer to the 11th and 12th graders, the juniors and seniors. But I did enjoy it. Some of the same themes I have seen many times before in terms of the traditions and stuff like that. Um, the rest of it is just bullying and, and doesn't really exist. And uh, Ned's tips, very good, except for the, oh, hey, just don't mess with it. If it's bullying, that's a little different. But all the other tips were really, really good. Enjoy this episode. I hope you join me for the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click the button below to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And I will see you on the next video here on School Principal Reacts. Thanks for watching.